Hey Grace here, I'm switching gears from deer season to turkey season. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some different things pertaining to turkey hunting. And uh, what I want to talk about now is the approach to the setup. Now we talk a lot about uh, getting the perfect setup. Well the key to the perfect setup is the approach to that setup. If you're making the wrong approach, you'll never get the perfect setup. Uh, for instance, you, you, you generally, to get a perfect setup, you want to be above the turkey or on the same level with him. If you're going to a turkey and he's uphill from you and you're steady climbing on your way to that turkey and you're going directly to him, well, you'll always end up below him. And uh, so your approach is what's killing you. Uh, a situation like that, you need to go around, flank around, and end up getting above him or on the same level with him. Now, here's an example right here, and this happened uh, several years back. I was hunting this piece of property, and there was always birds in there. They was always generally about the same place, and I'd always, to begin with, before I learned the place, I'd always do the same thing. And what it was, and this is a topo map that I kind of just crudely uh, drew out. If you can't read topo, I'll kind of walk you through it. This is a, a drain down here, a holla up in here and here's another one that comes around here's another drain hollow little small streams going down the middle of it this being a ridge coming down here in between these hollows here's another ridge and over here another ridge and the road comes up out of this bottom up on the ridge and follows around the ridge and my parking place was always right here. This is where I would park. And the turkeys would always gobble somewhere out in here. Uh, sometimes they'd be closer, sometimes down, sometimes a little further up. Well, what that would throw me having to do in the approach would be cross hollows and hills and hollows. And it was kind of difficult, if say he was right here, just over the top of this ridge, it was difficult from here to tell whether he was in this holler or in this holler. So it slowed my approach down. It really made me have to be careful when I topped this hill. And it didn't matter where I flanked around this way. If I thought that turkey might be up here, he could easily see me down here. If I flanked around this way, he could easily see me down here because these bottoms were just very open. So, it really slowed my approach down having to cross hills and hollows. I'd have to get right here just before peeping over this hollow and wait for another gobble to make sure he wasn't just right here. Because when they're off down in them holes, they, they just muffled, uh, the sounds are muffled. It's difficult to tell how far they are from me and everything. So it really slowed my approach down. And uh, probably the three or four times that I approached from this direction to a turkey off and down in here, I went 0 for 4. Well, I got to noticing that these, once I learned the place, that these ridges were feeding all the way up here to this road. There was a lot further walk, but I got to noticing that if I came around here and started right here, right at the head of this hollow, that I could clearly tell which ridge a bird was on or you know exactly where he was at whether he was on this ridge whether he was on this ridge well that really sped the approach up and uh even though it was a further walk there's a little more vegetation on top of these ridges and i was able to close ground really quick and get really close without uh without worry of spooking them and another thing that would help say the bird was exactly like right here and you got this terrain here i could actually slide off this hillside work my way around and get right here on the edge and just call the bird right up and, uh, and kill him. And uh, once I did kill, I think I was right about here once, he was right there and I called him right up and killed him. Another time he was off down in here and I could tell he was down lower. So I dropped down to about this level and called him right up to and, kill, and killed him. So coming in from this way, I was 0 for 4 coming in from this way, I was two for two. And I just don't think that's by coincidence. I think any time you can work your way up above them and, um, and start from above them and follow these ridges right down to them, just flank. If he's on over here, flank down here, come down. If he's over on this ridge, flank over here and come down to him. 
and it's, it's a lot better way to approach a turkey and ends up with a, a perfect setup and a quick and easy kill. All right, here's another example of how uh, my approach led to a quick, easy kill. Now this was in Missouri. It was in a piece of property that I'd uh, hunted like once before, maybe twice before, but I'd never been in this particular area, so I knew nothing about it. Now, from the field I was listening in up here, I had the turkey pegged to be somewhere right along in here. And uh, I could see this big ridge feeding down towards him. So I, my plan was to come down here, set up about right here, call him right up the ridge and kill him. Well, as it turned out, when I got down here, that I could tell he was across this ravine and the stream down here. It was a dry, uh, a dry stream bed and the turkey was across it up on a steep hillside over on the other side. Well, the lazy thing to do would just been to set up here and just hope I could have called him across and he would have came over here and I could have killed him. But I, I, you know, I've heard this song and dance too many times. I knew what happened. I would set up right here and he'd come across on this ridge over here and uh, just look across into these open woods and see me and he wasn't gonna come. That's, I, I knew that. So to make things even worse, the leaves were like a foot deep, like dry corn flakes. It was so noisy. I could tell once I got right in here that the turkey had begun to hear me walk. And uh, he was still a good 250 yards away. So <clears throat> what I decided to do was just pull out. This, this wasn't gonna work. I wasn't gonna be able to get any closer this way without spooking him. Couldn't get down here any closer. I'd be across a branch from him, or a rocky stream anyway. It really wasn't running any water. It was kind of a, a, a drainage where it would run water when it you know, would really rain, but it was rocks all down. Everything else was just leaves. And uh, so I just made a decision to pull out. I pulled back, came well back where he couldn't hear me walk, and I dropped down into this rocky bottom and I started just rock hopping down through there. And I was able to get all the way down here. Of course, he's up here on this hillside, but I'm down in this bottom now. I'm actually kind of obscured from him. And once I got right along in here, well, I had to make a move. And there was another cut up here. If you can read topo lines, you can see that that's a, a deep cut. And it was kind of rocky too. So I was able to come up and come up this hillside and get right along here, get really close to the bird and uh, and get here real quiet. And there was still some terrain between me and the bird, kind of a rise up. And I was able to move a little closer, get right here. And uh, the bird pitched down and I called him right over that little slight knoll right to me. And uh, that's just an example of, of knowing that the setup that I would have had over here was a really poor rod setup. So rather than going ahead and making a, a, a bad setup, and this turkey was gobbling, there was one good thing about it, you know, you, you got to take it in account how much the turkey's gobbling. If he was only giving me one or two gobbles, I would have set up right here because I would have, wouldn't have been able to get this close confidently without risk of spooking him. But because he was gobbling pretty good, I was able to keep up, keep touch with him, and I could just ease down there, this uh, this place where the uh, the water had washed away all the leaves, and there was nothing but rocks. I got down there really quiet. He was gobbling up here, snuck up this drain here, which was you know a lot steeper, and uh, but it you know was had rocks on it and stuff. So I was able to sneak up there and then pull up here just a little bit and get where I could shoot to that crown of that hill and had a you know, really quick and easy hunt. And, uh, and I shot him and killed him and he flopped down the hill was down in the rocks down there when I picked him up. But uh, that's a couple of examples. Uh, you know, say you're, say you're going to a turkey and he is uphill of you. You know, don't go straight toward him. Peel off to the side. I, I use an approach that I call the dog leg maneuver. And uh, it's which I never really go straight toward a turkey. I mean, I, I can't 100% say never because there's some good situations where the turkeys are down ridges or whatnot, and you can kind of go towards them. It's, you know, it's uh, not to your advantage if the turkey's right here to go off down in here somewhere. You just pull right here and kill him. But 
in a lot of situations, it is an advantage to you when the turkey is way away and you're trying to cover a lot of ground not to go straight toward that turkey. Pick an angle, go off to one side or the other, and you want to kind of read the situation. Like in this situation right here, it'd be crazy to go off down in here and be across the branch. The best angle to take would be go over here and end up up here somewhere. You'd have a better situation to uh, move in on him. But uh, that that's just a couple of ideas that I have. Whenever you go in toward a turkey, don't go directly toward him. You know, there's a couple of things that you gain by not going toward a turkey, not directly toward him. You gain the advantage of never spooking that turkey. You know, a lot of times turkeys, especially in Alabama early season, they're not giving you but one or two gobbles. And if you try to close the distance going straight at them, there's a good chance you're gonna overshoot, bump them off the uh, limb or spook them or whatever. But if you're going at an angle where you're ending up 150 yards to his left or 150 yards to his right, you're gonna actually overshoot the bird a little bit and still not spook him. And uh, the second benefit out of using what I call the dog leg maneuver, cutting off, you know, at an angle to him, you, uh, you gain the advantage of being able to judge his distance when he is gobbling. It's uh, just a triangular effect. It's just like this, you know, the same thing that happens when you're driving down the highway and the telephone pole goes by quick and the moon looks like it's following you along. The further object is, the more it's going to, you know, the less the angle is going to change as you're moving at an angle to him. So you can kind of judge their distance by using the angled approach, if that makes sense. All right, here's another example of an approach that ended up in a perfect setup. Now, what happened in this hunt, it was less about terrain and more about habitat. And uh, as I was working toward the turkey, and uh, the turkey was like right in here somewhere, and I was working toward him trying to get an approach, the, or trying to figure out where to set up on a turkey. I was walking this way, I was trying to decide whether I wanted the dog leg to the right or dog leg to the left on the turkey. I'd got to the point where I knew I needed, he wasn't gobbling that good, so I knew I needed to break off and start angling to one side or the other. Well, when I was coming in, I got noticed him to my right as I was about to make my decision to go right and left. There was a lot of uh, tupelo, tupelo gums, uh, tupelo gums or whatever they're called, like a, a wet weather gum tree. And to my left, I could see the tops of live oaks. Well, I remembered back in the fall when I was deer hunting that live oaks had lots of acorns and they held their acorns, you know, pretty late in the season. They dropped real late. And uh, there were still a lot of acorns on the ground uh, when season ended. So using that, I made my decision to dog leg toward the live oak acorns. When I got there, immediately I started seeing scratchings. I was just up on the same level as the turkey. It was just obvious that it was a great place to set up. So I set up right here, made a few calls. He walked down, I killed him, and he ended up killing two turkeys right here. The same, they ended up being the same spot, gobbling, call them down. So that's, that kind of lets you know how the approach, you know, and the decision to dog leg right or left really led to the better setup. Because if I would have just been trying to cut distance, and, and that's a big mistake, is just trying to cut distance and go straight to the turkey and set up here. I could have got too close, I could have bumped him. I'd have set up here. It was in a damper area, a lower area. This up here is where the turkeys were feeding. And uh, that's one thing I'd like to say. When I first started turkey hunting, I mean, there's obviously a lot of things that you do wrong, but one of the main things I did wrong, when I heard one gobble, it was just like I went into panic mode, that I wanted to cut the distance. I wanted to get the right distance from him and I wanted to get there quick as possible, and that was a straight line toward him. And uh, I would do that, but a lot of times I'd end up setting up in the wrong spot. Sometimes a turkey wouldn't gobble him uh, a lot, I'd end up overrunning him and bumping him. And uh, it really wasn't until probably about 15 years ago 
that I came up with the idea to dog leg to one side or the other of the turkeys. And, and my success has been a, uh, a lot higher on getting, you know, a lot better setups. And uh, also considering the terrain and how you approach the bird from the top down, uh, that helps. It's just a lot of things that, that'll help in, in your approach. Uh, if you really have to think about it, and you, you know, if you start thinking about it, you'll come up with some things that I don't know about. You know, you may have different terrain in your area. Our, our area is just generally rolling hills. Some places are flat as a pancake. When you're, you know, really flat, you still don't need to ignore the subtle terrain changes. A lot of times just in the swamp, a one foot elevation uh, change will change the type trees that grow there. Down here be uh, the overcup acorns, one foot rise will be the, uh, uh, the uh, live oaks and the pin oaks and stuff like that. Just a little bit of elevation changes what grows in them places and it changes where the turkeys uh, roam through and deer too, you know. So you really learn a lot when you're deer hunting. You know, you already know where the turkey's gonna be in the spring. I've got a, a place right now where I trapped them hogs the other day, I trapped some hogs, got some got some of them out of the uh out of the food chain where they was eating up all the acorns in this area and by getting rid of them hogs those acorns are gonna last till turkey season and uh, I'm gonna kill turkeys right there on those acorns because uh, you know, because I know they're there from the deer season. I already know where I'm going to kill turkeys now, and it's still a month and a half away from season. That's just knowing the type foods they eat, knowing their habits, knowing where they're going to be in the spring, knowing where they're going to roam, and, uh, you know, in some past history, uh, knowing kind of how the turkeys flow through an area. All that comes into play. And, uh, and you know, one thing I've learned, you know, if you're going into a new area and you don't know, the turkey's gobbling, he's telling you where he likes to be. He flies down, and uh, I always give a turkey a chance to be stupid enough to do the same thing twice. If you roost in a spot one day, flies down and works a ridge, and you know which ridge he's on, if you don't call him up that day, the next morning, two hours before daylight, be sitting where he was when he landed out of the roost tree. He might, uh, through the same place or the general area, he might do the same thing twice. It's a good chance he will. And uh, if he does, I can guarantee you I'm gonna kill him. I don't know about you. I'm gonna be in there two hours before daylight waiting on him. But uh, anyway, that's a good wrap up, getting you thinking about the approach. The approach is what leads to the perfect setup. It's not the setup, it's not knowing where to set up, it's the approach. If you don't approach it right, you won't end up in the right setup. 